Hello, grandchildren. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about being in a long distance relationship because, uh, yeah, it's hard and I don't, I don't know if I have anything useful to say about it, but here we go. If you're watching this, keep in mind that I have no idea what I'm talking about. I've only been alive for like 20 years and that's hardly enough time to really know what's going on with anything, let alone something as complicated as love. Anyway, here's my two cents on how to survive being in a long distance relationship. I guess what's worked for Skylar and I. I'll start with the basics. Um, the most obvious is talking on the phone every day. Uh, Skylar and I talk on the phone we're like uh, probably anywhere between half an hour and two hours every day, which it might seem like a lot, but it's not that difficult to fit it into your schedule if you actually try. It's the, probably the most obvious, but it's probably also one of the most important just because that's the thing that's going to keep you two connected uh, like mentally during that time that you guys are separated. Another thing, and I'm not sure how common this is, but we end up trading things a lot, like giving each other things that belong to us. She has one of my shirts, one of my jackets, and a couple of years back I was in this play that uh, we had these giant body pillows as props for one of the scenes in it, and uh, the teacher let us keep it afterwards, so I slept with this giant pillow for a couple of years, and now that I'm gone, she has it, and she gets to sleep with that every night. It's hard to bring a lot of stuff to Australia, but I do have this, which is hers, that I got at Disneyland, and I used it to like ask her to prom in high school. Anyway, it's hers, and we kind of trade it back and forth a lot, but um, yeah, so I get to sleep with this every night, and it's really nice actually getting to sleep with a thing that belongs to them. Another thing that seems to help a lot is getting pictures of them uh, throughout the day, which is really easy now because everyone has Snapchat on their phone. So I, you could just be in class and all of a sudden get a, a picture of her eating dinner with her mouth full and it's cute and I, that makes me happy while I'm in class and I just think about it for a bit. And then that periodically throughout the day, it's just one of those extra little tiny things that kind of helps you not want to die. Talking about them to other people also helps a lot, I think I've noticed, um, which is probably really annoying to everybody else, but it helps me being able to talk about Skylar to other people. Because it's just one other thing that helps you. It's a way of like venting how much you miss them and everything that you like about them. And I think that's really important is to remember everything that you like about them. I think in general, that's just a rule about a lot of things that are tough in life. Like just being in Australia is difficult because I'm in a new place and I don't really know that many people. And everyone that I've ever known in my life before this point lives on the other side of the world, thousands of miles away. So it's really easy to just get sad about something and not want to do anything and complain about it all of the time. You just want to find every little problem with where you are and what situation you're in and just yell about it. I think what I've realized, and I think this is something you can't really give to somebody as advice because they will never understand it when you just say it, but you know, happiness is a choice. It's your choice whether or not you focus on the negative stuff or the positive stuff. It'd be really dumb to tell somebody who's sad or frustrated about something to just be happier. When you finally realize that for yourself, it'll finally hit you that, oh wait, no, I just, yeah, I can literally choose to focus on the things that are happier instead of the things that are frustrating and then I'm less sad. But the same thing goes about your relationship. Don't always focus on the negative stuff about how difficult it is not being able to see them and all of that stuff. It's nice to also think about everything that's good about your relationship and everything that you love about that person and everything that is going to happen in the future. And if none of that works at trying to mitigate the pain of wanting to die because you're so far away from the person you love, sometimes it's nice to just scream. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, I'm glad we figured that out. I'm not trying to act like a relationship guru because I really don't know what's going on with anything, but uh, these are things that seem like maybe they've worked, or at least they didn't not work during this last six months of long distance relationship with Skylar, and I'm assuming will continue to work, or at least not not work, for the next one year and a half. Anyway, grandchildren, that's it for this entry. Uh, if you guys see me anytime in the, the me future, you present, we, we should uh, cook Italian food because I like that uh, and I feel like I want to eat it right now and I'm assuming that I'll feel like I want to eat it when I'm uh, a grandpa. So, yeah, that's what we should do. I'll talk to you guys next time.